Uh, hey, John Clements for the UMass Fruit Advisor. Today's Friday, January 28th, um, 2011. We're at Clarkdale Fruit Farms in Deerfield, Deerfield Massachusetts with Tom Clark and Ben Clark. Ben Clark right sorry. And uh, we're looking at a two-year-old tall spindle orchard here. We're talking about pruning it a little bit. We've already been over kind of these trees are relatively young, but it's time to kick in the rules for pruning tall spindle. And the first rule, Tom and Ben, is to take off one or two of the biggest branches in the tree. Yeah. So looking at these trees here, these are uh, Ruby Mac Macintosh, by the way. Um, Tom and Ben, why don't you show me what you'd prune, say, on these two or three trees here in terms of the one or two biggest branches of the tree and how we'd prune it and what would be left and why we'd do it. Can you do that? Sure. All right. Well, uh, this tree here, I would I would take two off on this. I would take this branch and this right. branch. The rule is one or two. Yep, yep. And so, not more than two. Yep. Um, and the reason I do that is is the diameter of the branch, um, it's getting, it's actually competing with the size of the of the trunk there. That's um, right. Well, well, for one thing, I mean, frankly, if you look at this, these probably should have been taken off a little earlier in the life of the tree because you can see how it's. It's already, it's already affected. Yes. Those actually, are bigger. And, this, and, this is a bigger diameter than this. Yes, and and there's there's a bunch of principles that come into play here. There's my diameter braced pruning rules. There's my um, forks or Ys. I have a saying that. Forks belong on the dinner table, not in your orchard. So, but anyways, go ahead and show me what you do to this tree to bring it back into conformity. There's one cut. And you notice the only cutting we're doing on these is we're not doing any heading cuts or anything like that. We're just doing a thinning off cut to completely remove the branch, right? Yep. So, perfect. All right, next tree. What do we do on the next tree? In terms of the cut, is it all right if it's uh, a horizontal or do you want to try and get it what? so well, so well we, this cut. is actually the, the bevel cut, and the this idea, you want to the idea with, with this is that it, you hopefully will get a renewal growth yeah. from that point. Well, out of, bottom, out of the bottom, out of the bottom, we right. leave we leave younger wood down here, so we'll get a branch coming out of here. Now, ideally, we try not to leave too much at the top uh, here. Yeah, that was a this is a better cut, maybe. It's hard to do, and I don't lose a lot of sleep over it because it's hard to say what exactly what, so, is going to happen. So if you leave too much there, what happens? You might well, get a you might a branch, you might get a shoot right? coming up like this. You know, ideally you get a shoot coming out of the bottom that's going to kind of it's going to still want to go up. But so okay, so that's what they call a bevel cut, and that you know we'll Maybe go ahead. Renewal. We want to so, renew your limb. That's but part I, of the idea. I Right. The, uh, we want to have new growth, and, and this is young wood. We'll get new branches coming out of here. So as long as you start this process early, you'll always be growing new branches. One of the things on this tall spindle system is none of these branches are permanent. After fruiting for two or three years, they all they get recycled out, rotated around, I call it. Make sense? This is a thing where it's probably easier for you to learn this than me, because you're coming in blank. And exactly. I'm an, old, I'm an old central leader guy, and I would say this is a perfect tree because you got you got a big whirl down at the bottom. Yeah. And that's what you used to. You can look at these older trees around here. That's what you wanted was three or four limbs coming out, two or three the, feet off the ground. The difference being, those would stay there for they the life be, of the tree. These won't. This will fruit this year. This will have fruit. This will have fruit. They're going to quickly tie this down to the wire this year, so this will set up fruit buds. But next year, one of these will come out. One or two of them. After the biggest limb, yeah. these probably already fruited for a year, mm -hmm. and now they're going to fruit for year number two. We had, we didn't have so let's do one or two more trees here, just to make sure we all get the right idea. And That's show me a good, good, good bevel cut out. there, Tom. Good <coughs> Excuse me. Perfect. So hopefully we'll get a renewal branch coming out of that. We should, yeah. for sure. So that's for this age tree that are going into their third leaf. <coughs> Really, the only thing we're looking at is the first rule. The, sec the second rule would be to make sure these branches stay fairly singular, I call it, which they are. They're, they're basically just one branch. There's no Ys in them. The other rule would be if these trees were reaching our height of, say, 9 or 10 feet, the recommended height, we'd have to clip them to get them shorter. But we don't have to worry about that because these trees are not that tall yet. What was your question? My question is... You're, we're looking at down there where the we other are. Things, but here well, you got a tree that's on, on, what I would say is unbalanced. Well, there's a little there's a little side rule that yes, you don't want bigger branches in the top of the tree. So 
Yeah, that's good. Yeah, off. I agree with you there. I cut that off. We really want, this is the kind of fruiting wood we want in the tops of these trees. We don't want, this is going to maybe be, able, I, I wouldn't worry about it, but, um, you know, we want this smaller stuff. This is going to be our fruiting wood in the top of the tree. We're going to have some older two or three year old fruiting wood here in the bottom of the tree, which is fine, but even that's going to be taken out over time. So here, like I said, we're focusing, and these trees, pretty much every tree you can, is easily, you can find one or two big branches that need to come out. Tom, what about this branch, the I next tree? Go ahead, too. that's number two, or is that number one? And this, this no, one. that's the second one on that tree. This one right here. Yep, yep. then I'd cut this one here off. Okay, good. So that's it, simple. So to wrap this up, <clears throat> now we're in a slightly older block, a Honeycrisp, trees on M26 rootstock plant four feet apart, but we're still going to use a tall spindle system here. So, Tom, we're looking at uh, what's the first thing we're going to do? Make one or two big cuts. Right. The biggest branches in the tree, one or two big cuts. It's a little difficult, yeah. Why I don't, why I don't like conduit. Vertical next to the thing. Why you don't like conduit? Well, that's all right. Just cut it and do this one. Good. All right, the next rule, well, the other rule is the top of the tree now. These trees are getting up close to nine or 10 feet, right? Yep. But we, the row width is pretty wide here, so I'm not too worried about it. I told Tom and Ben to just not worry about cutting the tops. Maybe next year we'll have to come through and do a cut to limit tree height, but this year I don't think that's necessary. The other thing we can see in here that I haven't talked about in the other, um, the other trees because they were younger is I like to we want to make sure what the branches that are left are, are simple and 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 singularized or columnarized so on these honey crisp I will do a little bit of cutting like this just to kind of single these branches out I'm not too wild I, I don't like my branches to get too big at the top of the tree so I look for that occasionally this one's a problem here too I'll get it eventually that's why I don't like my branches to get big. 